Hello and welcome to lesson 44 of additional maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at finding the area between two curves, following on from our understanding of how to find the area between a curve and the x-axis and between two limits a and b. So we're going to be looking at questions like this one where we need to find the area contained between the two curves y equals f of x and y equals g of x and between the limits x equals a and x equals b. OK, so from before, we know the process of finding the area between a curve and the x axis uses definite integration where you integrate the function between two limits and then substitute those two limits in and subtract. And that gives you the area. And when it's above the x axis, you get a positive value. When it's below the x axis, you get a negative value. And then all you need to do if it's a negative value is make that positive because area needs to be a positive value. So let's look at what you might think about doing in order to find this area here. You might think the best way would be to find the area below y equals f of x. OK, so that would be the integral between a and b of f of x dx. So that would give the entire area that's blue below the y equals f of x curve down to the x-axis between x is a and x is b. And then you might think, well, then we find the area between a and b of g of x dx, which is this pink area here. And then when we subtract the two, we'll get the green area that we want. And that is an absolutely fine way of doing this. However, I'm going to show you an easier method, which doesn't require you to do two different integrals. And that method is as follows. Now, we know that the integral really means finding the sum of all the infinite rectangles, if they're infinitely thin, that make up that space. So those y values. Now, instead of finding the infinite rectangles below the curve y equals f of x and then the infinite rectangles below g of x and then subtracting. Why don't I just find the infinite rectangles that make up the space between f of x and g of x? So these rectangles here. So each of those rectangles are infinitely thin, okay, and their height, their width will be the value of h that we choose and we, we, we're trying to make h as small as possible. And their heights will be the value of y from f of x subtract the value of y from g of x. So that height will be f of x minus g of x. So if I integrate f of x minus g of x between a and b, I will get the area I want. So the integral that we want is as follows. Integrate between a and b as our limits of the function f of x minus g of x. So we evaluate f of x minus g of x. We evaluate um, the, ex the we, we find the expression of f of x minus g of x, and then we integrate that between a and b with respect to x. And that is how to find the area between two functions. It's important to know which one's the function above and which one's the function below. And we do the function above, take away the function below. If we do it the wrong way around, all we'll get is actually is, is the negative version of the answer. So it's not too big a problem if we do it the wrong way around, but it's nice to get it right the first time. So let's show this in action. I want to find the area enclosed between the two functions y equals, f, y equals 5 minus x and y equals x squared minus 3x plus 5. Now, in this question, we're not given the limits of the area, x is a and x is b. So that sort of indicates that the curves or the functions will, will enclose an area without the need of having two vertical lines to enclose it for us. Now, y equals five minus x is a linear equation and it'll have a straight line, okay? With a negative one gradient going through y equals 
five as a, as a y-intercept. So it'll look something like this. And y equals x squared minus 3x plus 5 is a positive quadratic. So it'll have, at some point, hopefully, it'll go through that linear graph and then come back through. So when we're talking about the area enclosed, we're talking about the area that those two functions seal off. Okay, so that there is the green area that I've shaded. So what we need to find is we need to find the limits of that area, the two points at the start and the end of that area. In order to find that, we need to solve these two simultaneously. Okay, so solving simultaneously is our next step. To solve where they meet, we know that that will be when 5 minus x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 5. Okay, so this is just a quadratic, so if one side is zero, it makes it easier to solve. So take away five from both sides and add x to both sides, and you get x squared minus two x is equal to zero. Factorize, you get x, lots of x minus two. It's a simple one bracket factorization. And therefore, the two roots, the two solutions for this simultaneous equation are x is zero or x is two. So we know that the leftmost point has a, an x coordinate of zero and the rightmost point has an x coordinate of two. Okay? And if we plug those into the to either function, when x is zero, y will equal five minus zero, which is five. And when x is zero on the other one, y will equal um sorry, y will equal five as well. So that checks that that works. And when x is two, y will equal five minus two, which is three. And if we checked with the other one, it would also give us three. Okay, so those are the two coordinates where they meet. So we now have the limits of our uh, our um, integral. It's good to have, have a sketch of the graph. Um, I've got a basic sketch of the graph. I'm now going to draw in my y-axis and my x-axis. So it looks something like that. Okay. So here we go, for x and y. So as I said before, the integral between the, the area between two curves is the top curve. And in this case, the top curve is the blue line. So that's five minus x. Okay, that function is five minus x. So I'll put f of x is equal to five minus x. And g of x is equal to x squared minus three x plus five. So it'd be good to write down an expression for f of x minus g of x as my next step, because I want the area, the area is going to equal, the area that I want is going to equal the integral between 0 and 2, because those are my limits in the x direction, of f of x minus g of x. So it'd be good if I had a simplified version of what f of x minus g of x was. So let's do that. So we have integral between zero and two of five minus x, take away x squared minus three x plus five. And at this point, you need to be careful with your negatives because you're taking away a whole expression. And so you need to make sure that you deal with any taking away a negative etc so we're going to do the integral between zero and two of the simplified version of that now when we simplify this the five take away the positive five will be zero the minus x take away minus three x will give us two x because minus x minus minus three x is minus x plus three x so that'll be two x and we'll also get a we have no x squareds in, in the blue function. We're taking away one x squared, so we'll have a negative x squared. So we're gonna end up with two x take away x squared. So that's a much simpler expression to 
integrate than if I had to integrate five minus x separately and then integrate the quadratic x squared minus three x plus five separately and then evaluate both of those with the substituting limits and then subtract. This is much easier to do in one, okay? So that's why I prefer this process to evaluating integrals separately and then subtracting. So let's integrate. 2x becomes 2x squared divided by 2, which is 1x squared. Minus x squared becomes minus x cubed divided by 3, which is minus a third x cubed. And now I evaluate the limits. So I substitute the limits in. So I substitute 2 in. I get 2 squared, which is 4, minus a third of 8, which is a third of 2 cubed. So minus 8 thirds. Take away what I get when I substitute zero in, which would be zero minus zero. And that then gives me four take away eight thirds, which is simply four thirds units squared. Okay, so that there is the area that we wanted to find, the area enclosed between the two functions. So going through the steps again, we firstly found out where the two functions met. And those were the limits for our integral. So two and zero. And then we evaluated, we, we, just, we visualized the, the, the problem and we decided which function was above the other function. And we evaluated, or we found the expression that was equivalent to f of x minus g of x. And that gave us a, something simpler to integrate. And we integrated it between the limits and then substitute the values in, subtracted, and we got our answer. Okay, so it's time for you to have a go now. So make sure you have a pen and paper ready and have a go at the maths. You might make mistakes and that is absolutely fine, okay? But having a go will help you understand and, and get better at this than just watching the answer. So what I want you to do is find the area enclosed between the two functions, y equals seven minus two x, and the function y equals x squared minus 5x plus 7. So pause at this point. Use the workings out that I did for the previous question to help you. And have a go. Okay, so the solution to this is as follows. Here's one I prepared earlier. So firstly, you solve them simultaneously and they meet at x is zero or x is three. The graphs are shown here. Okay, one is a linear graph, y equals seven minus two x. The other is quadratic and they both meet at zero, seven. And when x is three, which is three, one. Then the area you want is the, the, the function on top, which is seven minus two x subtract the function underneath, which is x squared minus 5x plus 5, sorry, x squared minus 5x plus 7. And if you find the simplified version of that expression, of that difference, the 7 minus the 7 is 0, the minus 2x minus minus 5x is positive 3x, and you've got negative x squared. So you're integrating 3x minus x squared between the limits 0 and 3. And if you do that correctly, you should get 9 over 2 units squared, or 4.5. Okay. If you got that correct, that is superb, okay? Because it's likely to be one of the first times you've met this, and so you're still a novice at this. So to make it more fluent, practice this until you feel confident that you could do this without much thought, until it's just part of your natural process of maths, okay? So what you should do now is practice questions like this from exercise 15.5 from the textbook. Okay. Trying to avoid negative errors when you're subtracting two functions from each other. Negative errors will be the bane of your existence at sort of the additional maths and the A-level maths and beyond. I make negative errors all the time and it's, it's they, will, they will reduce as you practice more and more, but they will still occur. Okay, so just be careful when you're taking away functions from each other. So exercise 15.5, and then in the next three lessons, so we've got three lessons left of this course. The next three lessons are all focused on chapter 16, which is all about kinematics. 
Okay, so the, the motion of objects. So dealing with velocity, acceleration, time, displacement, and finding and the application of calculus. So this, this process of finding derivatives and integrals to be able to solve problems within kinematics. Okay, all right, so enjoy this and I will see you in the next lesson.